this time I want to demonstrate the 11 dots technique. So um, it's a couple of things I changed from last time. A same color paper, but this time I'm using the other side, the less bumpy side, so the side with less tooth. And this time I have chosen a complementary color scheme of reds and greens. So for my repeated shapes abstraction, I used um, a monochrome with some focal points, um, monochrome and blue with some focal points in orange added at the last minute. And this time I'm going to use reds and greens. Um, and I'm also keeping in my palette a creamy white, which is I guess on the yellow, a little bit leaning towards yellow, but it's more of a creamy white when it's applied, my actual white. And again, I'm keeping the mid palette, the mid um, value gray, to, but, if you remember, red and greens are um, complements, so they will neutralize each other. So I should be able to make neutrals without needing the gray, but I'm keeping it anyway. So it's best not to overthink this. Just add 11 dots. So that's 11. By the time you get to eight, you don't know where to put them anymore. And then instead of doing soft rounded forms like I did last time, I am going to do more angular forms. So it's just to connect the dots. Where am I going here? I'm gonna go off the page. It's just a kind of a connect the dots situation. Um, and so you don't have to do just geometric. You can do some rounded as well. The idea is to divide the space. So now I've divided this space really well. I think I want to divide the space a little bit more and I'm going to use those dots to do that. So I'm sort of fracturing it along the lines of the already existing 11 dots. Now, I like the one that went off the page here, so I think I'm gonna do another one that goes off the page here and here. And maybe just have them all go off the page. So that, and then this looks weird here. So I'm gonna connect to this one and then I'm gonna have that go off the page as well. So it's almost like I've created a stained glass situation for myself. Um, now I am seeing that all of the spaces seem to be about the same size. I want some smaller ones. So I'm gonna divide the space even more. I just, I really wanna adhere to my dots when I do this. I mean, you don't have to but I want some smaller areas. And it's kind of nice that the smaller areas are starting to be a little more centralized because that's gonna create an automatic focal point where those small areas are. I think that's enough. So now I can go in with my colors and just be intuitive about this. Like I think I want my brights towards the center, but I don't want them all at the center. So I'm gonna take my brightest, which is this, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna take my brightest, my brightest color, which is this, this lime green, this shocking green, and I'm gonna place it near, near the center. And um, at this point, just in use your intuition as to where which colors go where and go ahead and add them in now with these colors we do want to continue to use layering as a technique so we want some depth we don't just want it to look like we colored in a coloring book right so we want some some layering to create some visual interest, maybe even a pattern or a shift in value within the triangles themselves. So let's do that. And then we know that a dark values look really nice next to bright values. So 
and use that to our advantage too. And then if you want to get sharp edges for your pastels, just snap them. And if you snap them, you get a little corner and then you can use eight different corners before you have to snap them again. And you have eight corners on two pieces now, so that you have 16 corners if you snap them in half. Um, so we've forgotten about our reds. Let's put our reds in there. So we know we're gonna get some complementary colors, an optical effect by putting the bright red next to the bright green. So let's capitalize on that here. And also maybe here. And then maybe we don't wanna layer those, maybe we do. We know that with the, with the high key or high chroma color that anytime you layer another color on it, you're gonna reduce the chroma. So you may wanna leave one or two completely unblended or just you know blended with a, a clean, clean piece of cotton or tissue and just let it be. But for the most part, you do wanna blend your colors. So let's get some neutral in here by, I'm just using the red that's on the, on the um, cotton, and then I'm gonna use the green that's right next to it and blend that in. So now we've got a nice neutral panel there. And if I wanna, if I wanna clean up the edges, because these are geometric shapes, we kind of want them to stay kind of clean. So you can use your kneaded eraser to clean that up and just to contain the dust within its little section. Okay, so I'm gonna continue this on a time-lapse so you can see where it goes. So this is the 11 dots technique.